thank everyone for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we're representatives from the John Molson County Society. I am Marco Rossi, one of the co-presidents. This is Danica, she's also a co-president. And this is Louis Philip, who is a JMAS alumni, and he will be uh, spearheading the, uh, the training program, which I'll elaborate in the presentation. Um, so I can talk to you guys a little bit about what JMAS is, because I don't think anybody here is really aware of what JMAS is. Um, so ultimately, we're a student group. Yeah? You know where we are? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if the rest of the room does, so I might just take 30 seconds to talk about us. Uh, ultimately, what we are is we're a student-run association. Uh, we're, we represent accounting students. And so ultimately, our main mandate is to provide value to the accounting student body. So it's very similar as to what the CSU is, whereas the CSU is for Concordians as a whole. Ultimately, we're here to provide services for accounting students. We do have a project, though, called the Tax Clinic. Uh, which would be the bridge between our mutual goals, which is why I'm here today to present. Um, so I'll get into what the tax clinic is exactly. So primarily what we do is we offer free tax returns for any student, and it goes even beyond that. It's not just for students, it's for community members at large, which means that if you're a 35-year-old woman with two kids and you qualify based on your income and other criteria, then we can provide you with free tax returns, no problem. Uh, so it's really a community-wide thing, but as Concordians, we want to target Concordia as our primary market. So I think that's that's pretty much where we're going to be going with this. We will offer services to everyone, though. Uh, all our volunteers are all students, so primarily we volunteer. Our volunteers are tax preparers and people who take care of logistics and planning the day of. So all our volunteers come from the accounting program. They're all accountants. And we provide them professional training, which is what Louis Philip is going to be doing this year. Um, so ultimately, all all the programs that tax preparers need uh, require some form of training on how to use. It's not easy to pick up and just know everything automatically. There's also certain laws, rules, and regulations that you need to follow. Some of it are covered in class. Everything else that's not covered in class, LP's the guy. Uh, him and his team are going to take care of it for our students this year. <coughs> um, so we provide free uh, tax returns. They're T1s. Uh, we're sponsored by the CRA and by Walters Kluver. The CRA is the program or the governing body who runs the entire program for all tax clinics. <coughs> And Volters gives us about $50,000 worth of software for free every year. And this is something they do for multiple tax clinics. So it's part of the partnership with the CRA. Um, and ultimately, everything is done at JMSB. Uh, we're going to rent out uh, several rooms and several floors in the building, all taking place on March 9th and 10th. Um, and so we can talk about logistics and Q&A if you want. I can definitely go into detail. But for this purpose, uh, for this presentation, I won't go into full details on it. Um, so, Dan, do you feel like covering the numbers from last year? can't really see from here, but yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so last year we completed about 400 tax returns um, across the, the two days. Um, that's a 33% increase um, from what we did last year. So this is going to be the fourth year, I believe, um, that we're going to be doing the tax clinic. And every year we've been increasing the number of tax returns. Um, so we can see that there is an increase and that, you know, we might hit a certain cap at some point, but this is what we were here to address. Um, so last year, uh, the waiting time was up to two hours for to complete a, a, t a, a tax return. So a client would come in, line up, and then meet a preparer, and then from that time, from the moment they check in to the time they check out, um, it, it, it was pretty much two hours for them uh, waiting in school. Um, and on the second day though, so like on a Saturday yeah. it was two hours, on the Sunday we brought it down to one hour. So we made adjustments like throughout the tax clinic to try and reduce any wait times. And so that, that's one of the ways that we increase the total output. Ultimately our goals here, our goals are to like increase the total amount of service that we offer. So more tax returns performed, the better we are as an organization. Uh, reduce wait times, which kind of goes into that because it's client satisfaction. At the same time, we get to, to do more tax returns if people wait for lower periods of time. Ultimately, we just want um, the quality and the wait time to be a lot better for the clients to return for next year and, you know, to be able to have a good positive, a positive uh, impact on these people and for them to come back and to pass on the message for them to bring their friends, their family or whoever it may be to come and take advantage of the service. Um, next point. Yeah, uh, we had 100 student volunteers last year, over 100 student volunteers. Specifically, we had about 100 uh, tax preparer volunteers, which are really like the core of what we need. And so these 100 students get training at a professional level on how to do taxes, like their employable skills. What they learn, they can immediately go into the workforce and apply it and work for any one of the accounting firms to do taxes for people or even do it for themselves. Like they, they learn actual valuable life skills. Um, so this is definitely the benefit in terms of all our stakeholders. Our student body gets the most out of it. Between free tax returns and training possibilities, like that's the biggest value to them. 
just like a plus, like this 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 class, just for you guys to know. Um, we have an ACO, it's called ACO 340, which is um, income taxation for personal finances. And, and in that class, we don't necessarily know how to uh, fill out a tax return. So this is valuable experience for not only like accounting students, but just for everyone who do want to end up uh, filing their own taxes in the future. Perfect. Um, so last year, the CSU did partner with JMAS on this. We asked for $7,000 last year and received $7,000. Um, our total budget last year was 9.5K, so we got the remainder of the funding from other student groups and an SPF fund. Um, and so last year, our budget was basically what we see on the board right now. Hard to see from my angle. Uh, but primarily, what I remember is about $5,000 came out of laptop rentals. Uh, that was an unforeseen cost last year because we were supposed to get free laptops and then we ended up, we, that, that failed and so we had to end up paying for it, which is like the brunt of our cost last year. Uh, this year, we're probably going to get a discount on, on laptops, uh, but we're going to increase volume because we want to have more preparers in general to be able to hit those higher uh, number of tax returns completed. Um, so there are some budgetary changes in this year's budget, which is on another slide, but to give you a brief uh, outlook on it, we're getting more printers, we're paying for external training, and we're probably going to need like more food and services for preparers and volunteers on the day of since we're trying to double it this year. We also asked for the CSU to help us with our marketing reach because within JMSB we have very easy access to a bunch of marketing channels. Within Concordia and outside of JMSB we don't. And so the reality of the fact is we need help to be able to spread the message like hey you could get free tax returns through this tax clinic. We need to spread that message to people in Concordia. Right now, that's not being done. Last year, we asked for help, but it was a little bit too late in the game. We, last year, uh, the CSU partnered with us in February, and so we had maybe three weeks to be able to spread the word, and it wasn't enough time. That's the reason why we wanted to come here in December, was to allow three months to be able to get the word out and to really help. That's where we also see a huge value for counselors, because counselors are student leaders within each of your respective faculties, so you'd be able to connect us with the student leadership groups within those faculties and really spread the message as well. So what kind of hurdles did we, we encounter last year? Like, We want to improve. Where exactly do we want to improve? These are the three specific points that we're addressing this year. We had long processing time for clients. Anything over an hour is unacceptable for us. We want to try and target under 30 minutes. Um, it's a little bit ambitious of a goal, but that's our target and that's what we're going to work for. We also had a huge burden on JMAS last year. So an individual member of JMAS had to take care of the entire training program for 100 people and take care of all their course workload because they were a full-time student and manage their own personal lives. It was way too much for that one person to handle last year. And so this year, we're going to have an external team who's going to take care of it. Um, and that's where LP will come in. If you have any questions regarding external training, I'll direct them primarily towards Lou Philip. Ultimately, uh, the marketing we discussed, like. It's a problem. If we can't get outside JMSB, or we have a hard time getting outside JMSB, that's something we have to address immediately because that's the biggest driver to get people through our tax clinic in the first place. And so these are the three solutions that we have to come up with this. Uh, we're going to increase the amount of volunteers to 200, and that should help us reach two goals, the 30-minute wait time and the 60, uh, 600 total. 600 is a benchmark. We could reasonably hit 800. We could hit higher, mark, uh, higher targets. We just don't know yet, so we're kind of taking a... Uh, an approach that's more realistic. So 600 is a 50% increase. It seems reasonable based off the numbers, and we'll see what if we can surpass or not. Uh, the external staff of trainers are all made up of people who are tax professionals, either aspiring CPAs who are in the program right now doing the schooling, or people who have passed exams and are just waiting for their hours to be completed. And two members out of four are JMAS alumni. And the reason why we opted for JMAS alumni is because these are people who know what the tax clinic is about, who understand the spirit of the event, who are there to really help the community, and have experience having dealt with the tax clinics before. So they're ideal candidates bridging the gap between professional knowledge and that community project aspect, which is where we are. And we will also make a call to council to help us uh, reach all Concordia faculties. So we would make all the marketing material, and ultimately counselors would will be able to help us or connect us with the right people and then to spread the message across the board. Um, I have a budget breakdown. Uh, we definitely cannot see it. Uh, but the budgetary costs all come from uh, increase of, of food and drinks for volunteers on the day of. So that's basically doubling since we're trying to double that. We're also trying to, uh, there's about 6000 to $7,000 that's going to go for external training. And I can break down the cost structure of that as well. Uh, within the package of documents that was given to you guys, there's something for, um, pitch, it's basically like a package to the preparers, and that has all the details and the breakdown and costs, so we can run through that in Q&A if you'd like as well. 
Um, so those are, that's really where the primary costs come in. We're also doubling our printers. So last year we had a bottleneck when it came to printing. Uh, sometimes we have to wait in line for printers to complete printing packages and documents. And so we don't want to have that happen. We're doubling the amount of printers as well in consequence of doubling the amount of, of volunteers. We had three printers last year and that was definitely not enough. Um, so definitely um, doubling the amount of printers would help. So just to give you an idea, a tax return takes approximately 50 plus <coughs> pages to print and sometimes preparers would have to make mistakes and you know the, the paper, we would have to run last minute to go get paper um, and then the printers, sometimes they would jam up or we would have to replace the ink. So it would be um, a lot comforting if we had more printers so that way we can reduce the amount of time, the wait time for the client as well. Um, other than that, we are planning on having more trainers, so um, with that, we are providing lunches to these trainers because they are here throughout the entire day. So um, additional cost for the food um, would be included as well. Um, food, training, that's pretty much it. That's printers, the bulk, yeah. yeah, that's the bulk of it. The training is the big bulk of it. It's about 70% of the total increase in budget. Uh, the printers are about 15 to 20 percent, and any possible fees you can pay for laptop rentals are another 15 to 20 percent. And so that pretty much is like the 100 percent of the additional funds that we're asking for. And so this leads us into what the partnership's going to entail, uh, what we're asking for from the CSU, and what we're going to deliver in return. So in terms of financial partnership, the budget breakdown is approximately $19,000. What we're asking for is 19 plus a 5 percent emergency fund, so that would total for $20,000 for the event. So that would be for basically this year and every year subsequent to this. So we're asking for like this to be a partnership for the next five years or a lifetime if possible. Uh, for the marketing channels, we would make all the material and we would just ask that CSU and counselors push this to various channels. So whether it's student leaders groups or the CSU itself. Um, and for the counselors' help, it's really to connect us with other leadership groups or other student leaders within the respective faculties. A simple share can really go a long way. Um, last year, I remember students from uh, ECAM would come in because um, they have their own tax clinic, but just because of like the timing, sometimes they would rather come to our to our tax clinic, and just having the reach out there really does help. And sometimes we put posters at the local YMCA and stuff, and that wasn't really effective for us because these people didn't have direct contact with us. So if we have people like you guys pitching out the, the tax clinic, that would definitely help reach our goal. Uh, in return, JMAS takes care of all the operations. Uh, we take everything they have. We take care of the training uh, or the training outsourcing specifically. We handle Moodle, which is the portal that all the people who are going to be volunteers are going to use to access the information. So basically everything operationally, logistically, <coughs> content creation, all that, everything's taken care of by us. Um, so in return, we do the work for the financing um, and some marketing help. That's basically the, the, the overall partnership. Very similar to what we did last year, except we're trying to increase the scope and the scale of it all. We're trying to reach more people um, in the same amount of time. So that's where the training comes in in terms of increasing efficiency. And the marketing reach helps get more people aware of it and just bigger numbers in general. That's basically the entire presentation. Um, at this point, we can definitely open up the floor to questions. If you guys have anything specific, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Uh, thank you for that. That's really, uh, as you've been really good at helping us. I definitely want to support. I do have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, the first one I just would like to ask is, uh, do you have any other funding sources that you've been reaching out to or have support? Right now, no. Okay. So right now, you're the first source that we've approached. Last year, we uh, think we applied for SBF funding. We also applied for the Graduate Student Association and the CSU. So that's those are our three sources of funding for last year. Okay. Can I just ask about the SPF from the Dean of Students office or uh, I'd have to uh, Probably from the Dean of Students, but I have to double check so I can get back to all that one. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah. yeah, I had a couple questions. Oh, okay. So this is something you've done for a couple of years now? Yes, so this will be the fourth year. Okay, and you're planning to do it for the foreseeable future with your club? Exactly. So some of these costs, like uh, computer rentals, printer rentals, um, things you have to incur every year. Mm -hmm. If you were to be able to say, get your own laptops mm -hmm. or whatever, would, you, would that be helpful to be able to store them somewhere for the year for your tax clinics? Is that something? So it's not something we'd be able to store. We don't have storage space for it. So ultimately, we need about like 300 to 400 laptops and about like six more industrial size printers. And so like our student space right now, we have an office, but it wouldn't be able to supply that. Um, and we have a very small storage space, so we wouldn't be able to hold it. We tried to maybe use the school's resources, 
but all these computers are going to need to be like wiped clean, input the tax software that we have, and then remove the tax software that we have. Um, so for now, what we do is we rely partly on <coughs> audit firms who give us clean laptops, and then we do the operations. They give us like maybe 50 to 60, and the rest we rent externally uh, since we can't really buy them. Right. The reason I ask is because there's this thing called the Student Endowment Fund that's I done through the Dean of Students in which um, we can access that funds for specifically um, sort of capital related things. They were renovating student space or buying upgrades to the campus. Okay. So that's a part of funding that exists to the CSU and to the GSA who want to purchase things like that. Okay. Um, that's the, so your technology costs potentially if we want to buy you materials, we could put it through there. Okay. Um, that's why I was asking that direction of the question. We can definitely do that. So like if that's an option that's available and, and the storage space is available through the CSU and this partnership, if this were to to happen for the next five years or ten years, then that, that we can definitely do that. Because our, our big problem is storage space. Right. Yep. Absolutely. So cool. I will look into uh, our storage space bills. We'll talk to Dean of Students and Associates. We purchase that stuff for you. Okay. Could we store some of it the year? Because that would be a great way of saving money every year. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, several thousand dollars in your back. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick? Um, First of all, like I just mean MSP, but circumstances changed, and um, I've always heard about the um, tax code. Mm -hmm. So you did a good job back when I was there, but um, never used it. Um, so I just want to say, like, great job. Um, the first question I have is: um, Is there any way, like, I guess because you're doing this through the CRA, and I get there might they might have some requirements, but like, is there any way that you could be? Doing the tax soft like the tax taxes electronically like yes. something like you file. Yes. Okay. We can definitely do that. Okay. Yeah. Just because like also printing is an excessive like it's excessive capital. Like right. we, Like I I know you're business minded so also it's just like it's paper too so I was just wondering that first. Um, the second. So there's two things. If, if before yeah, you go to the next question, I'll just like elaborate on this question first. So for sure, one copy has to be printed. So okay. the copy to the client must be printed because okay. they have to sign it. It's a legal contract. Oh yeah. The okay. copy that goes direct to the CRA that can be sent through U file, and that's something that Louis Philip and I were discussing earlier. So we can definitely do that on lower, uh, like, paper costs, I guess, and printing costs in terms of ink. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would still require one copy to be printed to, okay. to people. I don't okay. know if LP, you want to add on this for, for the operational aspect. Yeah, I could definitely because. Um, well, first, thank you for having us tonight. But mm -hmm. as for the specific e-filing thing, it does exist. But for the magnitude and for the, let's say, the amount of return that is processed, e-filing also comes with a lot of different, let's say, technological problem. And even like, let's say me, I work and I do this for a living. And we have people that are committed, let's say, 40, 50 hours a week to just solve those issues uh, of like bugs in the software and all of this. So that is why I. Honestly, it was our first concern. We're like, this is paper. This paper has to be reduced. Like yeah. it has to. But then again, all this, all those bugs, and also the confidentiality that is around it is a huge aspect. Like those people, we don't like. I mean, those students, all of like all of us. I mean, I founded this thing like four years ago. I started the tax clinic with the intent to serve students, and I was like, this thing has to go on. But I can't tell a student I I lost your data. Uh, online, so that is also why, for now, paper is still considered until uh, technological means are very efficient for e filing. Okay, yeah. Um, the second question is Have you considered also partnering with uh, ASPA or Ian's, like the Engineering uh, Society? Well, honestly, I didn't think about considering with like another group like that. I'm not sure exactly what their financial position is or, or how they can help. Uh, I'm open to conversations. Well, I'm sure like ASPA, like. If Talk to them. Maybe they'll help promote it. Like I guess that's one thing they could do. So just like, just thinking about that too. Because since it's open to all students, there's also another twenty thousand, thirty thousand students that probably would be interested. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I was hoping that the CSU counselors would be able to help us connect with those leaders specifically. So yeah, uh, yeah from engineering or or uh, yeah, basically all all the faculty. So okay. I definitely agree with you. Good point. Um. Chris? Yeah, so um, um, I just wanted to ask, are you partnering with any other associations on campus? As of right now, no. So right now, like the only real sponsor that we're <coughs> aiming for was the CSU because like globally you have the biggest reach. Um, so when it comes to marketing, you can definitely reach the most amount of people. Um, so right now there's no other prospective partners.
Killed. Can non um, can non Concordia students, i.e. faculty, mm -hmm. uh, attend the clinic? Yes. The only qualifications are your income, so how much money you make in a year from salary. There's a specific cap on how much you can make off interest, um, and it's primarily simple cases. So students almost always qualify, as long as you've been here for the last 12 months. You most likely made less than $25,000 and have less than $1,000 in interest income, and that's really the main requirements. Um, where it gets more challenging is if you're an international student who has a wealthy background, then it, then it gets a lot more challenging. But for your, you know, your student who lives in Quebec and is a Quebec resident, you pretty much always qualify. As a professor, like a faculty member of that caliber, you probably make too much money to be able to qualify. So this is primarily for people who are like on the borderline of poverty. Yeah, or let's say that are because really like the initiative was really meant like for for initially like for students and community and most most students are like when when we were there like I was in a situation where I was like this is much needed because if you go outside you know you, you, have, you have to pay like no one's doing this for free and you have to pay and I was like geez we can provide this for free for all those students and people were just like like thank you for that mm -hmm. so yeah of course if you're a professor way above the thresholds you know, Ultimately, the way we broke down the math is like for the amount of money that we're expecting to spend on this, which is about $20,000, we're going to positively affect the lives of about 800 students. And that comes down to a cost of $25 per student who's going to be positively affected. And that cost is lower than the $40 it would cost to get a tax return done by any other external party. Oh, yeah. So ultimately, what we're doing is we're providing students with a valuable service that's, that's a lower cost than what will be externally. That's the whole, that's basically the whole initiative in a nutshell, is to just offer those kind of savings to students. Are there any more questions? I've heard there's another counselor on their way. Um, yes, Michaela? Um, yeah, just um, to keep our questions short, because um, Marlene is coming only for about an hour. And we really have a lot of things to pass, so I'm really sorry to put pressure on the presenters, but we do have a few things we have to bring up. Um, and it's not your fault, we're asking a lot of questions, so we'll just keep them to a minimal if it's possible for tonight. I mean, at this point, I guess we're just in time killing mode, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> yes, I agree with one question, though. Uh, uh, if people cannot come to, to you guys with a tax, are, are you guys able to come to stu student though? Like how like how are you guys guys think think, think of a work, working in terms of if you do reach out to like other students, let's say I are, are you able to come to them if they can't come to your office or anything like that? So we don't have the means to be able to transport or physically like move to a student's location. They would have to come to our location, so we'll be at JMSB. Yeah. Um, we have, you have okay. yeah, we would have everything set up here. So, <coughs> like the lobby would be like the lineup to go upstairs. The second floor would be like the waiting rooms, uh, where we'd be able to accommodate uh, like the guests who come in or the clients who come in. Uh, the third floor and fourth floor would be reserved for all our preparers uh, who are working. So it would really, it really be all controlled in here. Uh, Michelle, uh, it's fine. Never said. Kemi. Yes. Um, um, we do not work with Lena um, because um, tax clinic is happening during the consumerism week, the same year, so like it was great for us in terms of timing. I'm super down to um, do some promotion for you. I think it like it fits perfectly and like it, and it's also a great service that you have been doing with you for a few years. Um, in terms of uh, funding. It's a lot of money, and I think we should be more counselors in the room to like uh, discuss this because twenty thousand is literally like uh, Michelle's budget for the year. Um, so yeah, and maybe we can um, we can also start with uh, John. If that's okay with you to like discuss like how things can be done. Okay, cool. In short, would you be okay with presenting in January? Uh, yes. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, yes, Michelle? Yeah, just because um, actually we didn't receive the document, uh, the, the PowerPoint, which means that we didn't have any of the budget stuff to look at. We just had a one page document. Um, Unless I'm wrong and missed something, but. I mean, I sent, uh, yeah, I sent. I, I 
I sent three documents. I sent a motion, uh, uh, prepare a package for the for the preparers, and this PowerPoint. Yeah, I mean, I'm just speaking from. Yeah, I only received the, the okay. one-page motion. It's what? I'm oh, sorry, no, no, no. Yeah, but I definitely submitted it last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's just for us. Like, yeah, we, yeah. we weren't able to prepare. Okay, sorry, that one's on me then. Um, okay, anyways, I'll try to figure out what happened after. Um, but yeah, if you guys are okay with coming back in January. So the budget is a breakdown of the difference from last year and this year in terms of what we're spending. So like I can tell you for a fact for sure, we have about uh, six point, we have $6.8,000 dedicated to the training. And if I give you the rundown on the training, essentially it's like a 10-week program or an eight-week program. Yeah, rocks. Everything is, is all digital, so it's like an online course. Uh, everything is done through Moodle, so for, it's, you have to be a student to be accessible for it. If you're not a student, you want to have access to the portal. Um, so that's like one of the, the, the ways you can mitigate that risk of having like external parties come in. Um, but ultimately, we film videos, we have cases, we have solutions to all those cases. There's also two in-class sessions where like... Yeah, doing class sessions over the weekend, there's offices hours also, because the goal, like the goal, you're all... Sorry to interrupt, we really don't have a lot of time. Okay. I know it's really weird to say that, but um, we have some urgent matters to go over, and um, we really want you to come next time and properly do this. Okay, cool. Sorry to keep off. No problem. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I will definitely send out your presentation to the group, and then, um, yeah, we'll reconvene in January and okay. get this. Uh, More or less, it will be like, what, January 12, 13, 14? Uh, uh, 9th is the council meeting. 9th? Okay, yeah. cool. All right, awesome. All right, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, guys. Um, so at this point, we have, well, okay, first of all, at this point, uh, I'll call the meeting to order at 7.34 um, and read the Indigenous Solidarity Statement as quickly as I can. Um, and if you folks want to start setting up, I'm just here. This okay, perfect. Um, so we'd like to begin by acknowledging that Concordia University is located on unceded Indigenous lands. The Ganyan Gehaga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and waters on which we gather today. Joe Jage slash Montreal is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today it is home to a diverse population of Indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with Indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. Um, at this point, I'll give the floor to Jade. Hello. Uh, hi, my name is Jade Sa. I am the founder and president of Concordia Students Nightline. Um, this is my executive team. Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> uh, I'm Camille. I'm the coordinator of training. I'm Margareta. I'm the external and secretary. I'm Claudia. I'm the treasurer. Um, hi, and essentially what Concordia Student Nightline does is that we are a confidential, non-judgmental, anonymous, active listening service. So we are a student-run service that is basically um, only running from 6 p.m. till 3 a.m., currently only on Fridays and Saturdays, but eventually we would love to open up every single night of the week. Um, so essentially we're just here because we want to apply for a fee levy for the next coming semester of September 2019. Uh, we registered as a CSU club as of September, oh no, sorry, January 2017. Um, since that time, we have been active on campus through various tabling sessions, through um, Mental Health Awareness Week, um, other types of things like that. Um, anything to kind of get our name out, um, be more familiarized with the student body. Um, it was only until September of this year, so September 2018, that we actually officially opened our lines. Um, since then, we have received a very consistent amount of calls from the student body, which kind of demonstrates how necessary and in need of our service is. Um, it's also, it's been um, very nice and kind of uh, rewarding, but at the same time, it's demonstrated um, kind of how much people in our community like would like to be listened to and need this type of service. So that's kind of essentially it, I guess, since we're kind of short on time, but um, otherwise I would love to accept questions and kind of have more of a dialogue about the our organization. That's it. Does anyone have any questions for Jade? So our fee levy will we be applying for uh, five cents per credit. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we believe it's manageable as we were, sorry, um, as we were, um, you know, collecting signatures, um, most of the students as well. I agree that this was a very manageable fee. Michaela? Uh, so it's going to be going to policy. We're actually going to start reviewing it this week. And um, 
So we'll have more information then, and we'll be going all the documents to council once that's approved through policy. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yes, um, within our documents as well, um, we included in our budget various operational um, fees. But essentially, as well, what's really important for our organization is the fact that we are confidential and anonymous. So that means that all of our volunteers, everything is run on a volunteer basis. None of our volunteers can actually let their peers know that they are involved with this organization. Therefore, it's really important that we provide a very strong community within our own organization. So that takes a lot of, um, that's essentially where a lot of our fees will be going as well. Thank you. Are there any more questions for Jade? Kevin, maybe How long have you been running as an organization? Um, so we've been officially uh, running as an organization as of September. Uh, sorry, January 2017. However, we did not open our lines until uh, September 2018. Um, however, during that time, we've been working really hard to kind of um, endow ourselves in the um, fabric of Concordia. We've made connections with uh, the Health and Wellness Center, the Dean of Students, um, also with external organizations such as Centre de Crise Quebec, and um, various other mental health organizations as well. So we're hoping that this will be something that'll just be a part of Concordia's fabric in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anything further? All right, well, if not, I'd like to thank you very much for coming to council. Thank you. And um, yeah, thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a motion to Nope, no, nope, it was um, the fee levies are recommended that they come to council to present. To, but yeah, there's no motion. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, so at this point, we are on CCSL. Yes, Michaela? Um, can we move the agenda right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, can we move online voting to be next? Okay. <laughs> um, it's very short. We have quorum. We have quorum. Um, we don't currently because we're Stuff there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. so then in spirit. Do you, do you mind putting that is, uh, potential student presentation? It will take five minutes. Yeah, okay. What needs to can somebody just yell so out like what needs to be passed? Will go first. Okay. Then online voting. Okay. Um CEO. Uh CEO. That should be that has to be done. Uh, so that should be added to the agenda? Yes. So okay. CEO. No. 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 Uh, and also add uh, the mindful project coordinator. That's okay. So <coughs> that order, yeah, I guess we'll and annex A. Okay. The, the first three are the highest priority. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Again, again. No? Okay, so we can get started. Yeah, okay, sorry, I was just uh, moving that around. Um, okay, so at this point we are on provincial student representation and Michaela? No, give me. Oh, sorry, Kami. So okay. I just need to read the motion. So I'm going to read the motion. So, whereas the CSU joined uh, l'Association des Bois Étudiantes au Québec avec in November 2015, whereas Marge Cap, which is the uh, University of Quebec in Chicotimi, uh, voted to disaffiliate from Quebec about a month ago, leaving a GK off, which is University of Quebec in Homestead, and CSU is the only affiliated member organizations, whereas two-term majority is necessary in order to dissolve the association, and that AGECAR has announced their intention to the external coordinator to leave AVEC if the <coughs> CSU refuse to dissolve AVEC, whereas too late to propose a referendum question to the student body regarding self-relation according to special bylaw uh, H, whereas other associations across Quebec remain interested in forming a, a new provincial student association to best represent their student interests, whereas remaining uh, in a provincial student association as the only member of Prince Burden on the CSU and the students it represents, uh, be it be resolved that the CSU vote in support of the dissolution of EVEC in the case that AGICAR proposes it, uh, be it for the result that the CSU supports the effort of the different Quebec association in creating a provincial student association in accordance to the CSU special bylaw H, and be it for the result that the CSU will attempt to recuperate as much of the studio fees collected for EVEC as, po as possible following its uh, dissolution. Thank you. Do we have a second? Uh, Rowan, do you want to motivate Kami? Yes, I will. So, basically, um, 
Avec have been had, had difficulty to um, get member. It's been a, a little while now. It's been since its creation. So we have reached uh, three at some point, and then Maj decided to quit very abruptly. Um, and then Ashikar is basically putting us in the corner. They have a different way of moving in terms of uh, the way they vote about things. So they are quicker to be able to make votes because there are fewer students to represent. Um, and they put me in the corner saying that like if uh, I, I mean if the CSU refused to dissolve the election, they would just quit and it will make a, a very strong burden on the CSU into dissolving by themselves this organization. Um, so this is why in the case they are proposing it, I won't propose it during uh, meetings, but if they propose it, I want us to have like a, a door, like a an like exit, um, and not to like put ourselves in the corner and just like make sure we we're safe, we're playing it safe. Thank you. Uh, Chris? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'd like to propose that we divide the question. Um, there's only one thing I think in this motion that's at all worth a long, lengthy discussion, and that's the point, be it further resolved, that the CSU support the efforts of the different Quebec associations in creating a provincial student association in accordance to the CSU special bylaw age. So I'd like to divide the question and first just vote on everything, which I think is pretty non-controversial, and then that point potentially table it. The reason being that we have many options. We could be joining already existing provincial student associations. We could create one, or we could just stay out of one entirely. Those are three options. I think it's worth um, more discussion than something we're going to rush, rush through with this few people today. So my motion is to divide the question. Oh, were you moving something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, you can't do that after talking for no, a while. No, I, I, started, I started saying I want to divide the question with this exact part. Okay, next time say I move to divide the question, let it second, and then motivate. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, okay, okay but I'll let it go. Um, is there any opposition to dividing the question? Okay. Uh, was there a second? Sorry, Caleb. Um, okay, so can you just state where exactly you want it divided? So there's the second to last paragraph that says, be it further resolved that the CSU support the efforts of the different Quebec associations in creating a provincial student association in accordance to the CSU bylaw, bylaw H. I want to divide that. Okay. Out um, of this motion. Maybe okay. I could, I mean, maybe it's too late, but we could amend it to looking into a provincial student association. I'd be amenable to that. Okay. Um, is everyone okay with amending it to say looking into? Because we're trying to speak. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Um, so we'll say Kemi moves to amend to say looking into. Do you want a second to close? Yeah, sure. Okay. That works. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the motion yet, Caleb? Yeah. A um, few questions. Yes. First question. I uh, remember meeting past we had loaned the VEC money because they were running out, they were, they were facing financial difficulties. Does that include, the? does that money include, sorry, the money we loaned to them, mm -hmm. is that covered under the last, the further resolved? No, so um, the reason why we loaned them money and why the finance court, like not court in our finance committee uh, loaned them money is because Concordia had delayed their payment so they're collecting the money, like Concordia is collecting the money and then like doing a transfer to EVEC and this hasn't been done until October. So this is why to um, keep a, like a good ca cash flow, we lend them some money. This money has been uh, reimbursed for half. So half have been reimbursed last week and then the second half is happening this week. I'm meeting with their financial coordinator so we can sign the checks. Uh, this, the money in particular talked here and here is the student fees that is collected by the university. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any more discussion to be had on the motion? All right, so if not all those in favor, please raise your placards. Seven, all those opposed? Oh, no, only seven. There we go. All right, so that carries unanimously. Um, if there's nothing further on provincial student representation, we can move on to online voting research and implementation. And um, I'm not sure who's yeah, taking that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so some people aren't able to be here because of a uh, health emergency. But basically, we need three quotes. Um, for anything that we do, we need three quotes of different companies, and we only have one quote. So this has taken time, and Sophie has contacted, I believe, six other companies, um, and we're waiting on them right now. Um, 
I think it's really important to hear what Camille has to say, our IT coordinator, who has experience with understanding the technicalities of implementing something like this in such a short time frame. Um, so maybe I'll just start with Camille talking and then we'll go from there. Hello everyone, so my name is uh, Camille Gagonski, I'm the uh, administrator at the CSU. Um, from a, a project management standpoint, it is very short notice. Uh, uh, there's, uh, there's all the questions that should be asked have not been asked. I had a talk with uh, one of our uh, one of the quoted firms today about this. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork to be to, be, to, to go through, and we have about one week to just make sure that everything everything is secure enough that technologically speaking we're up to date and uh, able to uh, to provide. Uh, I wrote uh, I wrote a general recommendation letter uh, for to my executives, and we'll read it now, so everybody is aware of it. So we all agree that this is a great initiative and long overdue for the CSU, talking about the, the online elections. After consulting with Robert Henry, the general manager at the CSU and our IT consultant firms, uh, including Ryan Alak from Simply Voting, we must communicate our concerns about the ability to execute this, this initiative in January with 100% guarantee that this is going to function and go on without any issues. We believe that the amount of time to test and ensure that uh, an off voting system um, is not sufficient. The following are some of the, these reasons and concerns. As of this Friday, December 14th, this is on, there is only seven days to deploy and test a system. Our experience about this is very limited. Our biggest concern about this is security. Knowing that the security network, the CSU security network has already uh, been compromised in the past and still contaminated by, uh, uh, with ma malware as the result. Because there's no way to guarantee the integrity and confidentiality of the votes that will be made on their requested CSU, CSU laptops. Moreover, virtual elections are much less secure potentially than paper ballots since it makes it available on the internet to anybody knowing what they do. The only way to make, make it as secure as a paper ballot is to restrict its access to a local area network. Our present hardware available is old and out of date. So uh, we have been given a batch of 70 laptops for those uh, who don't know by Concordia. And uh, we are trying to, uh, to refurbish them to be used uh, during the election at the, at the uh, voting polls. Uh, we don't have the time to. We don't have the time to uh, to do the benchmarks and basic tests to just make sure that they they won't crash during the uh, state election. So. Um, there's also the, the time issue to, uh, to deal with those laptops. I have basically one week to, uh, to prep them. Um, it's, uh, we're not equipped to deal with that in, uh, in an efficient and uh, foolproof manner. Our IT consultants also communicate uh, such concerns with the ability to deploy a system that is, uh, that is guaranteed to work in such a limited time and uh, with in inadequate testing. So uh, we are assuming that Plan B, if in the uh, uh, if uh, the virtual election fail in some way or another, uh, would be to return to the paper ballots. In that case, what would we do? We do? Uh, do we have to to make the, the ones that voted already online to vote again? And uh, knowing all that. Uh, would, it, would it be better to deploy the online voting uh, strategy on at the March election instead of right now? Thank you. Uh, Sophie? Uh, I just want to have a question because I thought that we voted that uh, there would not be voting station. Like, the people would just vote back on their own laptop. Do you want to answer? Yeah. Part of the benefit of online voting is that you can vote from any computer anywhere or your cell phone or whatever. Uh, we would still nonetheless uh, have voting stations, which is done in basically any student union that has online voting. So what they do is they promote, in, uh, through their physical presence, they promote the election to students and encourage voting. So it's not essential in an online election, but it's a really good idea if you want to get a decent turnout, because it has to be visible on campus. Well, um, yeah, yeah. 
Well, it's just like I agree that we should have them. It's just from what I understood, we like my understanding of last meeting's uh, decision was that there would not be any polling station. Okay. Well, good. Well, about this. Um, Knowing that our network has been compromised, there's really no way for me to uh, to install Windows on them without having a considerable risk for them to be already contaminated. Um, so, knowing that there's right now there's no added value to have those laptops. Actually, we are making the election even more uh, vulnerable to uh, to security issues. So, uh, as John said. Uh, the, the, the one of the major goals of having online, online voting is to make it more practical for students. They should and they, they, they would be able and should be able to do it by themselves, even on, even on a cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a curious. Yes. Thank you. Patrick? Um, I think that's a good point in the sense that, like, I guess for the polling stations it is a risk, but I think for, like, anybody who has a normal laptop like mine, I don't see like the malware issue to be the same because it's like the security, like the, the votes, like the, the servers, I guess, are going to be hosted by whatever company we choose. If it so be simply voting, big pulse or simple survey. Um, but I guess like I understand where, where Camille is coming from when it comes to the laptops. Like that's definitely a concern. Um, but yeah, like it would have more like, yeah, so we could consider that. I guess, but the the polling stations. But I think for it in the overall perspective of the election, since like everybody in this room who has a laptop or a phone can vote, like right now, have, if we were doing it, and there wouldn't be that ne like necessary security risk, just because like, for example, the NDP, uh, SMU, they've all done their um, they've done their elections with simply voting, for example, and I have not heard of any issue with like the online voting for those elections and. Like, yeah. So I think it's just really the company we choose for in that sense. But yeah. Thank you. Michaela? Um, okay, so I think right now we really need to have an action plan as a, as a plan B um, in case it doesn't go well because the whole point of us having January elections was so that there were no errors. And last council meeting, I asked, is this realistic? And I was told by counselors that it was. And by our IT administrator, it does not seem like that is the case. So to make sure that this does not happen again, because that would be horrible, uh, is to have a plan B to see, okay, a week before, if things are going wrong, they're not, it doesn't seem like it'll work, we go to paper ballots. Even that is not great, because then we'd be spending money um, and we'd have to think of both scenarios and spend money concerning those, both, both of those scenarios. And we haven't worked out the cost of that. But I think right now we should be focusing on how to make this reasonable and realistic and what actions we're going to do to have a plan B. Thank you. John? Yeah, uh, I guess this question is going to be on because of the nature of online voting, we can log in and vote from any old computer or mobile phone. It would be nice to have the CSU laptops that we can provide, but if needed be, polling clerks could like use their own computer or something like that as a temporary measure if we were to go forward with the online voting. But the concerns still do remain around issues like what if the voting system goes down during polling period uh, for whatever reason, or if the ballot wasn't designed right or because it, uh, that week period for testing wasn't really there because of the short notice. Um, can you maybe elaborate more on those pieces? Because it seems like the laptop piece itself can be addressed, but the other ones, I don't yet see ways to fix that. Yeah, testing is the key issue here. Uh, we, we don't know online voting. We don't know its mechanism. Uh, we, uh, we have to, uh, to familiarize ourselves with it, and we don't have enough time. Uh, in any project, especially IT, you got to know your product. So uh, I feel that there's a lot of unknown here. Uh, it's like basically trying to drive a car for the first time, going on the highway and having never done it at first before. So it's just really good, a good practice to, to take your time when you make a big trend transition like this to make sure that everything is in order, that it will uh, answer to our needs, it 
it is reliable enough to do the job. That's that's what the whole point is. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I just want to, this is far from the most important thing, but uh, people have said that polling stations aren't necessary. Um, maybe they won't be at a certain point, but the CSU has historically had problems with voter turnout. Um, both CASA and ASPA have implemented online voting in the past year, but both of them had physical polling stations, so I think it's important that we at least make an attempt so that students can see that their election is happening, um, and that students who don't really know what's going on can be walked through it by somebody. Yeah, okay, so I got some questions for Camille, if it's all right. Yep. Um, the first one is, would it, so generally, do you believe if we have more laptops, there's more of a security risk, and less laptops, less of a security risk, or do you think it makes no difference? No difference, it's just longer to set up. Okay, that's good for me to know. Uh, another question I have is, did you speak to McGill or other universities that people in a similar position as you who have been you know, tasked with overseeing elections in any capacity. That that would be a good idea, but no time, no. Okay. Do you think you would be able to do that in the foreseeable, like, next week, or? This is my last, last week. I'm okay. going on vacation. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Sorry. So uh, I'm going to be back on the 7th, and my understanding is that the elections have to be done by the third week of January. Mm -hmm. We calculated that leaves us about seven days to do all of this, which is not enough. All right, and then just one final thing. Okay, go ahead. Um, it's the idea that perhaps we could just eliminate polling booths altogether in this election, and not just forget, and then not just eliminate it and forget about it, but like spend all that money we would have spent on the polling booths on banners and put them literally everywhere. I think that would save us money and it could Can I ask give us the opportunity for... Um, yeah, you're next on the speaker's list, so go ahead. So, um, about what uh, Patrick said earlier about the security and what you just said, uh, what's going on with those polling stations is that um, the goal of having our computers acting as polling stations, uh, if we had a secure network, uh, would make the, process, the entire process more secure in the end because we control platforms on which the students vote. So we could isolate them, make them somewhat like kiosks, closed kiosks that can only, like we, I could log the USB ports, for example, to prevent like any kind of hacking whatsoever. I could only allow internet connections to our website. Uh, disable all the web browsers. Um, but since uh, our laptops are, will most likely be, be compromised if I install them from our, net our network, this defeats the purpose. And um, so having laptops would be uh, a best case scenario because it also, it, it's a big transition from paper, paper ballots to online voting. So it, it presents a face, uh, I'm talking from a user experience per perspective here, it's a, a really common concept in IT. It, it allows them to go from the paper voting to the on online voting more easily and in a manner that's reassuring to them. So we have, we just put on a phase that, that says we have a new voting system, we are ready to, to uh, present it to you, we have everything we need with our little computer laptop mounted as a kiosk and then we go, 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 can go on through the election. It's, it would be a plus value, definitely. We just, it's just an option right now with what we have, uh, with the computers we have and the security issues we have. Uh, yeah, I think that given the possibility that we won't be able to get online voting ready, like if testing fails in, in the beginning of January, like there's a risk that we won't be able to offer that system. I think we should definitely prepare to have polling stations. Of course, like yes, it would be more visible, but also like if there are reserve, if there are polling clerks, then we would we will be ready for a Plan B, and we should prepare those paper ballots. Like that's a lot of money and. You know, it's not super sustainable, so that you know, that's not nice. But at the same time, like these election needs to happen on the third week of January, and we need to do everything we can to make sure that it happens. Thank you, uh, Michaela. Okay, so um, can I ask a different question, to Camilla, and then yeah. I can talk again? Okay. Um, without any laptops. Do you think that it's realistic that we can do online voting in the time period that's allotted 
without any errors or any issues that are going to come up, like major ones? Not having laptops, uh, will, uh, having laptops will not keep us from having uh, errors or, or faults during this process. Uh, there will be less things to do. Right? There, there will be less things okay. to do, so actually it's kind of a good thing. It may not be a good thing regarding the user experience yeah. for the transition, uh, but that has like nothing to do with the percent of the, the risk we are taking for it to fail or not. Okay, and so is it realistic to, with the timeline, to complete this task? Nope. Okay, so basically I feel like the executives have been put into a really unfair situation. We've been mandated to do something in a very short time period in which we've already majorly messed up the election period. Um, I really don't feel comfortable for us to continue to do this, regardless of the politics and the referendum question that is happening. This is not the best way to implement online voting in a way that will make students want to know, uh, be part of this. I don't, I don't think that will happen, especially if, let's say, it gets cancelled again. So. Um, I don't have a motion right now and I've already started talking, but I really, really encourage somebody to come up with a motion, if not I'll do it myself, to, to go back to paper ballots because we are not prepared to do this. There's also policies that we have not even considered, temporary policies to do online voting, um, which from my understanding after talking to Simply Voting and other, other um, companies, people who do online voting have policies about campaigning specifically regarding that kind of format. So we're really not prepared. Um, I don't feel comfortable doing this and I can think it, say on behalf of the executive team that we don't feel comfortable doing this, especially if this means that the elections will be cancelled again. We've been put into an unfair situation and we vocalized this um, the last council meeting and I really hope that councillors are hearing us on this issue because we do not want this to be a bad election again. And um, we really, we really need to listen to our IT administrator on this because he's really the expert here. Thank you, Sophie. Yes, Patrick. Um, I think, like from my understanding, from working with policy, or not policy, um, appointments committee this week, we're supposed to be doing an SEM to. Um, get a CEO and I think like maybe we could get like a plan B going by then to pass for maybe like when we're going to be doing the SCM maybe that's a possibility um, but yeah um, that's what I was thinking yeah thank you John yeah this is just a question for Camille if we decide that uh, getting those uh, donated laptops ready for time for the general election isn't going to be priority we can just use like polling clerk laptops at the promote stations and it'll be fine and we go forward with online voting. What do you think is going to happen? Well, it may be uh, a more difficult transition for for the users or for the, the voters. Uh, some of them may be confused as to how to vote exactly. Uh, even if we provide uh, written procedures on how to vote, uh, in ten years of experience, you, users don't read procedures. They be often like to speak to a human being. So, uh, well, at least if we have somebody at the only vote, even if they don't have laptops, that will be the, that will Sorry, still be they wouldn't have our laptops, they might have their own laptops. Oh, okay, yeah, with their own laptops, with anybody that can explain how it works, uh, it's entirely feasible. Thank you. Michelle? Um, I resent it. Thanks. Okay, Peter? So, I have a question for the executive team. So, if I, I, I understand that, that the executive wanted to go back to the paper place, but the, the, the question that, that I'm having right now is that it would be the same thing if we go back to the bullet, we still need to get a com com computer set no matter what. So you, if we do go back to the old system which we still need com, com, computer to be set and the new system also require the 
computed to be that too. So what's the dif difference if we go we go we're going to go back to the other one because it seems to me there's no difference. So we should just M for online if there's a possibility though. Does anyone have an answer? Was a question for who directly? Yeah. Um, the executive board. I mean any of the executive, but I just I just don't think that we sh we should change be because it's going to be the same thing because you still need to set the com computer com computer no matter what. It's just that that, that one is a new system, but you. S yeah, Kevin, it's not the same thing. It's like. First of all, I think one of the main differences is that we have regulation for paper ballots, either. We have regulation for paper, paper ballot, which we don't have for online voting. And also considering that it's like a totally new system that we're trying to organize in a week, it's, I mean, it's like very different, I'm sure you know about this, it's very different to create something from scratch and to create something new in a week than just like doing the regular thing and what's how it would be done in like years. Thank you. Patrick? Um, let's see. I move to close proposals for the online voting companies for Friday uh, by the end of the day. Uh, okay, do we have a second? Caleb, do uh, you want to motivate? Uh, basically, we need to get moving on this and uh, we do have one proposal ready. And I do think that like this certain company simply voting has come above and beyond and if there aren't any other proposals I think we should move forward with them um, just because like number one the president did come above and beyond talking to me especially after at that last um, council meeting he did talk to me at 8 or 9 p.m. he's come like I didn't even ask for this proposal like I, I did receive a proposal back in September for uh, from simply voting voting I never asked for it he gave it to me straight up and um, I've been impressed, and I do think that, um, let's just get moving on this, yeah. Michelle? Um, yeah, so we need three proposals without three, pro and that would be assuming that the three proposals are even accurate, like adequate. Um, so we can't just close the proposal and go with whatever we have. Uh, considering the amount of money, we need to have several options to look at. It's in our standing rigs. Um, so, we can't just close them whenever. If we don't have enough, we don't have enough. Uh, and even if we were to close the proposals for Friday, that would leave about two days to implement online voting before our offices close uh, and we go to break. We can't have, the, the, by the time we get back, things have to be set up. So that is, I'm talking to the chair, sir. Uh, yeah. Michaela? Um, yeah, what Michelle said, I think the fact that we're rushing this is just, more of an indicator that like this is how this is how the elections were postponed we rushed things we thought that we could get things done in time even within a system that we know we don't know this system we don't know what it's like um, it doesn't look good to not have three qu quotes and not do this in a way that's safe and secure <clears throat> maybe we can move this instead to have in the March elections, okay? Like it doesn't mean that there's no online voting opportunity. Um, we can do it then. We just have to do this right. Thank you. Uh, Rowan. Like, I think we should go with the IT professional in the room who's telling us that this isn't a great idea. Like, I agree with Michaela, this doesn't mean we scrap online voting, this doesn't mean it doesn't happen for March, but, like, yeah, like, it's already been said, like, rushing our elections was how we ended up in this mess. Doing it again with a bigger project and more ambitious and a shorter timeline is not the solution. Thank you. Sophie? Well, I, yeah, I just think it would be bad practice, even if it wasn't in the responding regulation, to just go with the first um, company that we talked about, even if we have a good feeling about them, like that doesn't mean that other companies would be give us a better feeling or a better proposal. So I think definitely we should be careful about trying to just accept the first quote that we get. Thank you. Chris? Yeah. <clears throat> I think 
It's perfect. If we were to uh, not withstand the standing regulations for the three proposals, I'd be perfectly okay with that because, yeah, by, by a timeline of Friday, because we've given everybody a chance. We've sent out emails, told you you're allowed to propose. We're in a, an emergency situation here where we've got to get our elections together. I think it's perfectly fine if they can't respond to us within three business days, which will be Friday. We've already reached out to them. That we go ahead with the one person, the one company that has responded. Thank you, John. Yeah, a uh, question for Camille again. Well, thank you for your uh, answers when I asked about the uh, polling stations and laptops. So, based on what you said, it's possible that if we just have the polling workers bring their own laptops, we can get that issue off the table. It should be safe. Taking that off the table, given all the other considerations in getting from where we are now to doing online voting. What could go wrong in the periods? What are the risks? There are any. I'm sorry, so I'm having trouble hearing we, you. So we said we're not going to do using the, those donated laptops. Yeah. But the polling clerks bring their own laptops. You said that'll be not an issue. Given all the other things that are involved in implementing this as a project, what could go wrong if we were to go forward with it? IT-wise, it's always about security. If, if, if I don't have to, to prep any computers, that's all that's left. Um, now, the rest, the rest of the questions are about, the rest of, of the risk about this are mostly about uh, regulations and about knowing the product and if it suits our need. Um, I can talk about security if you want. Is that, is that anything and everything you can so actually, the um, <coughs> rep from Simply Voting sent me uh, literature about this. I haven't uh, read it all. So besides the, the basic issues with malware that could uh, sniff out our results or uh, intrusions that could potentially give control over the election to uh, unwanted third parties. Um, anonymity could also be compromised. These are the main risks. Thank you. Um, Kimmy. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like considering the fact that like uh, we barely met quorum today, I'm not sure if special counsel will work next week. Uh, also, is there any particular reason why it has to be next January and not next March? Is it like because I'm I'm really confused about this? It's kind of a direct question to you. Oh, because you I can respond. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. yeah. The reason I want it is because I understand that we're getting a, an, an opinion, and I do respect your opinion on the safety of online voting. But I honestly believe that if we couldn't do a paper ballot election in six months. We can't pull this off in one month. And I do think if we were to get to simply voting on Friday, if they're the only offer that remains, and to secure things as soon as possible and get this moving, we're in a way better situation than trying to organize a ballot, a paper ballot election with DEOs, with a polling clerk, and in the situation where our CEO is, we're transitioning between CEOs. We're not gonna have a CEO until next Wednesday. I think, I, I you don't have to agree with me, but I think we're in a lot safer position getting the move on online voting. And I think that's why we voted on it last council. Thank you. Uh, Marley? Okay. Sophie? I called a question. Okay, we have a second. <coughs> yes. Uh, Kemi, <coughs> uh, is there any opposition to calling the question? Can we just okay. repeat the question? Um, the motion was... Um, so motion to close proposals for online voting companies by Friday, end of day. Right. Um, so again, again. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, uh, are you against calling the question? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, so all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your placards. Six, all those opposed? One. Okay, so that carries with a two thirds. Um, okay, so all those in favor of the motion, please raise your placards. Well, the more can you repeat the motion again? Yeah, okay, so the motion is um, to close proposals for online voting companies by Friday, end of day. 
right? So all those in favor, please raise your placards. One, two, three, four. All those opposed. Oh, James. Oh, sorry. Five. All those opposed. One, two, and any abstentions? Three. Three. Oh, sorry. <coughs> three opposed and zero abstentions. Sorry. All right. Um, so that carries. And we're back on the speakers list, which so far is no one. Yes, Patrick? Um, I, maybe this will help, Camille. I don't know if you ever got this, but Assembly Voting did send me their security audits. Um, and so they, I didn't ask for them. They just sent them to me. So Yeah, I got this. OK, cool. Uh, the, these are these are secure audits that I should read, though. The, uh, I have about 20 pages to read about this, so I really can't say anything about it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Information. Anyways, uh, I'm just wondering, like, uh, if we don't have to read quotes, meaning that we would need to not withstand the standing regulation, the, doesn't that mean that we need a two-term majority? To pass this? Well, nobody actually voted. Like, the only thing on the table <coughs> is to close the... Okay, okay. Like, there's no motion to do anything afterwards. Okay. Um, and if anyone can point me to the standing regulation that says that, because I cannot find it. <laughs> oh, it's in the state of it. Okay. Uh, Rowan? Anyways, here. Whereas the executive team has not been given enough time to implement online voting due to the winter break, meaning that there would be one solid week to get everything prepared in order to start troubleshooting, Whereas the IT administrative administration is very concerned about the timeline of implementing online voting and has directly stated that in their experience, this is not realistic to implement in this time frame. I move that council not withstand the relevant motion from November 28th and that the January by-election be held with paper ballots instead of online voting. Do we have a second? Uh, so Pete, throw in your motivation. I think the referendum that it's going to will speak to whether or not this is something that we do in the long term, and I'm happy to see that happen in the long term. Um, as for the short term, as for the January elections, council forcing us through is risking us having illegitimate elections, it's risking our democracy, and it's frankly ridiculous. We're ignoring professional opinions, and like, it's like we have fiduciary responsibility, we have to do what's best for the union, and that means ensuring our democracy, and that means not risking it, which is what we're doing here because we don't have the time to implement this. We have professionals telling that that's this. Like, we haven't done our due diligence. We don't have the time frame for this. Forcing it through is irresponsible, to be sure. Thank you. Chris? Yeah. Um, first of all, fully respect what Rowan just said. I really do. But I also respectfully disagree with this. I personally just do not trust in the paper ballot election, and I will be voting against it. And I just want everybody to know in the room, it's only because I really do believe it's the least, the less safe option. Thank you. Peter? I personally also against what Ruin with the same because if we are going to go back to the original paper but, but and if we cannot do that do that within the last year how are we going to put the whole thing in one month when we come back like Say that again. like i mean if we can even not get get it down within the, the past like six months like three like three to four four months appeared how are we able to put it back in one in, in, in one in one month so and also besides the even if we're going go back to people ballot, we still need the security thing to be set on the com computer in order for the pulling clerk to have it and it's going to be any of the same thing. That was a question, can I? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just there's a whole bunch of people who wanted to answer it. So, Michaela. Um, okay, so I'm not really understanding this logic for this because um, even though last elections it did not go as planned, this is how we've been doing it for years. So we have, as yes, we have to do a policy review, but it's actually just so much more secure. I'm kind of confused because currently we have zero policies zero experience for online voting. That's a whole other way of thinking and doing the elections. We have no company right now and we have to not withstand policies to bypass a process where three quotes is integral in order to know that we're working with a company that is 
gonna do a really good job. We're rushing things even more right now by adding that. And right now we're telling you um, in our experience with a team of people who've been around for a really long time and through many elections, that we do not feel like you're giving us enough time in order to do this well. And we are very worried that the elections are gonna be canceled or postponed again. We're very worried about that and I feel like counselors are not really hearing our, our worry that this will not be done in time that, um, you know, four, okay, maybe like five days in total before the break is not enough time to get things started. Uh, you know, especially when the CSU has many, many issues with our, our, um, our hardware, as Camille has mentioned. And I think it's really important and it, can, it says something that Camille is coming here out of his working hours He's very concerned, it's his job, and you're actually, he's a staff member, you're putting pressure on him to do this, this work. Um, he's part of a union. This is not a fair task to put on staff members. Um, our general manager is also extremely concerned. We asked him to come here, and he actually said, maybe I don't need to come because, you know, they'll listen to the expert, Camille. And that's clearly not what's happening right now. Um, he came to each and every one of the executive, our general manager, Robert Henry, who's been here, I don't know, how, how many years? 2013. 2013 is extremely worried, extremely, went to every single one of us saying how worried he was about this implementation during this time. Um, he's very for online voting, by the way. He's very, very for it. He does not think it's realistic. He's been talking to many people in the office about it today. Um, I don't really know what else to say. This is really ridiculous. You're not hearing us. We don't think this is realistic. We've talked to the experts. I'm really disappointed, and I feel like this is an extremely unfair task to put on us right now. Um, and yeah, I think this should go to the media. To be honest, I think this is, this is unfair working conditions. Thank you. Uh, it's actually your speaker turn. I'm done, yeah. And information, what does it say in um, the regulations about the three proposals? I've been trying to find it. Uh, it's sustainability policy. Uh, which article? Like, which I remember? Yeah. Um, and you want to general general like, I think it's just general practice in the union. I don't recall any clear standing regulations. Okay, well, if anyone wants to it's do it. It's definitely practice. Mm -hmm. We always do. Right, thank you. Um, our, uh, uh, this is a direct question to the elections committee, I guess. Uh, in the event that we use uh, online voting, uh, what would be the relevant uh, student information that needs to be disclosed? Yeah, even anyone on the election. Maybe you should clarify that. I'll take it. Yeah, I sit on the elections and participation committee. I just want to clarify. It isn't like a typical elections committee that most unions have. It was created for the sole purpose of investigating online voting and other means to increase voter participation. So it's more of an investigative committee. So before uh, I get to your question, I just want to make sure that's clear. Because sure. the name, I'll be honest, is not very clear on that. Uh, what was your question again? Sorry. So in the event of uh, uh, implementing online voting, uh, what would be the relevant uh, student information that we need to disclose to the third party? Uh, yeah, so it would, like, it would, we would be taking from the student list just like how, like, the CSU possesses a student list of all the, uh, members, and, um, from my understanding, it would be most likely the email and the name of the person. It's probably, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Uh, it's your speaker turn, too, Patrick. Um, I mean, I'm going to be voting against this motion just because, um, I feel like I, I, I just can't trust paper voting from what's happened. We had six months to do these elections and look where we're at now. Like, personal information was compromised too, it was left on the desks. Um, we had all this time to plan the elections, it wasn't done. And um, I don't know if we can still do it in a month and I do think that like, we're, like if we're going to a company, they actually have professional experience with this too. And I don't think we should be discounting that either. Yeah. Sama? Yeah. Uh, so, like, I 
I came late to the council, so I don't know if this has been already put into the council before uh, I came. Uh, but I just wanted to know, like, since you guys are talking about uh, there has been one quotation that I came for online voting, uh, I just wanted to uh, know, like, what is it? Like, well, how much is it? Like, what the whole quotation? Uh, if we do have that, can we compare it to the one that we just had the uh, uh, cancelled election? Uh, if we compare it to that and um, if it's ending up, sorry, yeah. No, I can reply to that what you done. Yeah, uh, okay. So, uh, like, if we compare it to that, to the one that uh, we have quotation, and if we think as a, as a council at last meeting they did, like, read on it, and we can uh, carry on with the plan if it's less than the quotation, if quotation is less than the one that we wasted, uh, uh, like, in the council election, so it's going to be a great idea. And as a, no, as a person who was nominated and as a candidate, also, like, I feel more safer now. Uh, like because uh, online voting I'm seeing for the last uh, I think so five years in this university and uh, the thing that were told last council meeting about uh, the, the people who are going to react a lot more than the paper ballots the turnout would be more, much more better and people will be much more interested into uh, getting into the election fair and all that stuff. Thank you. Uh, Did you want to answer Joe? Yeah, the one quote that has been received so far, like, sorry, there has been some replies from other companies, but uh, quotes as detailed as the one from Simply Voting that was sent to Patrick back in September, um, uh, those haven't been received yet, no. One that was received from Simply Voting uh, estimated, uh, probably after tax, you're looking at around 9,000-ish, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on the actual numbers, but that's your ballpark there. Um, it's. It is objectively cheaper than doing uh, paper ballots, and this is because um, we had uh, security guards. Um, so all of this information has been posted publicly um, the, uh, on the CSU's uh, online. You can see the statement on the Facebook page. I uh, put a statement about the elections budget, so you can see all the info there if you want. Um, the cost of uh, the paper balloting includes the printing costs themselves, which aren't too substantial, but again, the security card cost is the major point. We have uh, about 17000 for that. So, um, uh, we, we, presumably, if we also were to do the um, uh, March elections online as well, a $9,000 ballpark-ish quote would be spread across two elections. So, it is objectively cheaper. However, uh, I would encourage folks to think more than just along budgetary lines here, because the, if the election does not go well because of the short timeline, and there's an error for whatever reason, that will cause a lot of damage to our credibility and to the democratic process. So please consider that as well. But that is the election information you asked for. Thank you. Uh, so my question is for the election committee. Uh, why uh, do you think that uh, we would have a better voter turn turnout with online voting, and uh, why do you think it's more secure? All right. So. I don't think it's more secure because it's inherently the most secure thing in the world. No matter what you're, no matter how you do an election, there's ways for it to mess up. There's ways for information to get out, as we saw in the paper ballot election and as your warning for online elections. My whole thing is it's about balancing the two, right? To me, organizing a paper ballot election, if I believe the CSU was like had all the committees it needed in place, like we, I really do think we need an elections committee, which we don't currently have like one to actually oversee elections. Uh, we need a consistent CEO. And I'm not dumping the blame on the executives at all. These are just unfortunate consequences of how things went this year. But, but we don't have these there. Yeah. Okay. What are you studying, Chris? Let Chris Sorry. finish, please. Okay, please. Okay. Oh, no. okay. Can I just point out information on something that's not aggressive, but just, I'd just like to point out that Okay, please quiet, Peter. Yes? I'd just like to point out that the correction was directed to the elections committee, and there was no correction made in that Chris does not represent the elections committee. Oh, I. Sorry, I was looking at I the audience. Um, yeah, but I'm just I saying thought, that's I'm not sorry, I thought that was from the election committee. Yeah, I, I'm on it, but I do not represent it. Oh. Yeah. So that's not the opinion that's been... Like, that there's so a, that's... I need an opinion out. from the election committee. Just, uh, well, were you the ones who decided for the online online, uh, online elections? Yeah. In the, uh, the election no, committee? No, that was council. Oh, it was council that decided. Okay. As a whole. Yeah. Thanks so you were still part of that decision? I, I'm, I, I was the one, though, who raised... I'm the chair of the online voting referendum committee, though. It, it gets so confusing. So who should I ask this question to? 
I guess, really. Um, so, I, from what I recall, could you just repeat the question? Just yeah, so sure, I'm absolutely. Sure. So, why would you think that we will, would have better voter turnout with online voting, and why do uh, you think it's more secure compared to paper ballots? Uh, honestly, security is about risk management, and um, that's the number one thing that we all have to take into consideration, and you've done a great job with uh, flagging these issues when it comes to the computers. Um, However, um, I don't think the risk management was really assessed with the paper ballot election, and I do think that like, if we are able to assess the risks in terms of regulations for the candidates, um, and we are able to get a company that will be willing to go above and beyond for these January elections, I do think that this is possible because they are like these companies are also professionals. They do manage these servers, they do manage their software, and they do this for a living. So it's a vote of confidence. Um, and so the next part of the question was: I do think that when it comes to raising participation, which is a stated goal, um, I do think that this is easier to disseminate to the student population than it would be with um, uh, paper ballot elections. I do f know from my experience. Um, people get really frustrated, they don't like to wait around uh, at the polling stations, and um, there just isn't sorry. enough awareness on campus. Um, information just on this again, sorry. Yeah, is it, I, I just missed, is this again of speaking as the elections committee, as the chair? Because I, I, I need to be clear that there are no conclusions based on the, I sit on the elections committee, there are no conclusions based on the research that, the minimal research that's been done that everyone has access to. I just need to clarify that, that like, they're, we're speaking here as if conclusions have been made, and as far as I know, as a member of the committee, there has been some start on research, and I wouldn't ever be comfortable making conclusions based on that research. Which has been made by? By some members on the committee. We've only had two meetings. Okay. Want to continue? Um, well, yeah, so as I was saying, it is a stated goal, and um, I, in a general sense, from this is anecdotal, just keep in mind that when it comes to keeping records of stuff, student unions or student associations, whatever you want to call them, because it depends from province to province, um, they're not really good at keeping archives of stuff like this. It's just not on their radar. Um, but from the few that I have talked to that had it, it did raise participation, and I do think it's particularly, I'm speaking from a personal standpoint, I do think it's just because it's easier to disseminate. But yeah. Thank you. Michelle? Um, I feel like we've been having these same conversations. I feel like a lot of this is the conversation that we had last council. Um, what the executive is bringing up is not the validity of participation during online voting. If it raises participation, we are interested in it. What we are saying is that it's not a, a feasible task from the information that we have from our IT people. Um, and all we're hearing from council is, yeah, but online voting is good. That's all I'm hearing. And that's not what we're saying. As your employees, um, we are telling you we can't do this. And all we're hearing is, well, we're doing it anyway. So I want to hear how council expects us to do this. Um, I hope that council understands that because of the nature of public opinion, if this goes poorly, it will most likely, as it did last time, fall on the executive. Um, we are asking, and, and we had a part to play in the postponement of the election, but we are coming right now and saying, we can't do this. I'm going to be so disappointed if the elections have to be postponed again, um, when we've specifically come to council and said, we don't think that we're able to do this uh, with the time that we have. And if we are, we're not convinced that we can have safe, fair elections. Um, we've been really clear, and I, I don't know what, what else to say, because I don't know what kind of magic people expect us to work. We're saying we have like maximum five days to put this through. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot to me. Maybe it sounds like a lot to other people. But maybe um, other people don't realize that there are so many other operations in the union that also have to run. We can't uh, all abandon what we're doing just to push this through. And even if we were to do it, we aren't sure it's, it's possible. So, uh, And I'd also just like to mention that the point that was brought up on the um, three proposal system was a corporate resolution that passed last year. We are currently looking through the minutes to figure out where it is. Um, but. 
our understanding is that it was passed through council, but we're just trying to find where it was. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chris, did you have a question? Um, yeah. Uh, you know what? No, so I'm going to rescind the point of information, but not my like, yeah. point. Yeah, so. Oh, sorry, Patrick is next. Sorry, not your uh, point. Did you What's have a the question? Motion being discussed the motion, um, it, Rowan didn't send it to me. Can you read it out loud? Okay, Rowan's motion. Got it. Okay. I don't have it. I can read the paper. Yeah. 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 Essentially, uh, by election with paper ballots. In January, specifically. Until the actual vote, we until don't polling work, period. Chris, no, um, I understand that, but don't you? When we get back the seventh of January, yeah. don't you continue working for the next few weeks? My understanding is that the system should be in place, not you know the day before. Uh, the, the three weeks, opens. right? Uh, no, three. The third week of January uh, is the fourteenth, which is a week after we come back. So that's one week. But so that's not three days. It's like fourteen. No, so here, um, our offices close in, I, I want to explain because I'm not trying to just throw numbers around. Um, I'm going based on the assumption that we would close the proposals on Friday, meaning that our office remains open for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Uh, and my understanding is that we should have the system in place within a week of polling, which is the only amount of time. When, when we start back again in our offices, we have a week until polling starts. Okay. Yeah. But so my understanding is that, if I'm correct, uh, things should be more or less set up within at like a week of polling starting. It shouldn't be set up the day before. Yeah, absolutely. The risk of that is just too high. That's right. And just to be clear, we're taking vacations. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> is everyone good with the timeline? Okay. Um, James? Uh, I called the question. Okay, do we have a second? Uh, Chris, is there any opposition to calling the question? Okay, so Chris second. All right, um, so all those in favor of the motion as read out by Rowan, please raise your placards. Two, three, all those opposed. One, two, three, four, five, and abstention. <laughs> Sorry. Can I just please? Yes. Sorry, so does council want us to work through our holidays? Is that what I'm understanding? No, we're, I'm, we're not working. Well, I'm just trying to figure out how. Okay. Um, I have been noted, please. Okay. Um, yes, you can have it noted. Um, if council wants to come up with an action plan, um, I don't know what the answer to that is. Sophie? Uh, no, I just don't understand. Like, well, then I think we okay. We need to think about a plan B in case like these elections. Uh, if we cannot make this election happen for the second week of January, like apparently people are not hearing what our IT uh, go to like person is saying to us and everything else that has been said on council, but like we this the election are not gonna happen and if they we are able to create the system, there's a high risk of having problems and uh, technical difficulties. We are also not hearing our executive team who are like working above and beyond and like I think we're trying to assign blame to and to them by saying we're not also doing that but this is what I'm hearing to this meeting so I think we're forgetting that our duty is to protect the CSU as an institution and so now we're putting in jeopardy even more than we are already have been doing this semester uh, how we look and the integrity of this whole election process. So I don't understand what's the end goal here. And I think we're setting up for failure by not taking into consideration experts and our executive uh, team's opinion. Thank you. Uh, Patrick? Um, so, okay, so I move for, we have to do an SCM anyways for our um, CEO, so I move to um, 
create a plan B, um, like a backup plan, like have that created for the next SEM, and also, um, like I could do it myself. I could come up some, with some regulations. I could go look at what Miguel's doing. So I'm, I'm going off a tangent. But could I also? Um, I would also like to motion that um, we have regular, like temporary regulations for online voting for the next uh, SEM. Okay. Um, are you mandating it? Because right now there's just a motion to do something, but no one is signed to it. Um, so how about? Well, I well. I'll mandate myself to do it if you want for the regulations, and I can send it to policy and we can work with it. Like if Michaela wants it too, uh, yeah. Okay. And do you want to add and send it to policy before the SCM? Yeah. Um, we don't have enough time to do that. How do we have time to do that? I'm sorry, but like also for the CEO and um, having a special council meeting, we. Already today, we're going to say that we would actually, I mean, this is another talking point, but have appointments committee do it because um, we're really worried that we're not going to reach quorum and we're not going to be able to appoint a CEO. So we were going to allow appointments to do that because I'm very worried that next week we're not going to be able to do a special council meeting. Um, I don't think that we can implement good policies and since uh, Chris and Patrick are very passionate about this issue. Perhaps they can implement online voting themselves. So it's my idea. Okay. Um, there's currently a motion on the floor to create a plan B for the next SCM and also have temporary regulations for online voting put in place. Uh, is there a second for the motion? John, uh, do you want to motivate Patrick? Um, yeah, so just like. If, well, if we're not going to do the SM, it's fine, but like, I guess it's just because the, the intention is so that we have this going, but yeah, um, that's all. Okay, is there any more discussion? Yes. Yes, John. Uh, I mean, if council votes that we have to try to do online voting, whether or not it's advisable or possible in the timeline, like, we have to try it. Uh, if things go wrong, just remember that this is all in the minutes and on public record, um, and that there are people saying these are our limitations, if we don't meet those limitations, so be it. Uh, obviously we'll have to help with the plan B as well, because we have a sense of what our limitations are, right, and start contingency planning. Uh, we do have to come up with regulations as well. That should be tasked to probably the CEO when we hire them. Um, because, sorry, anyone who wants to make proposals around, you know, policy change that we could make on very short notice, that's good. But I will note to folks that if you were involved in a referendum committee or are a candidate, you are not eligible to participate in those things. You cannot be candidate and elections officer at the same time. That is a conflict of interest. So that also includes me as a referendum committee chair. So just please be mindful of that line that exists and exists for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it would be useful to know if uh, I have to prep those laptops or not. I know. No. Okay. Good. For March, yeah, that's reasonable. For January, no, it's not feasible. Okay. Uh, Peter? Who's not here? No. Uh, Marlene? Oh, okay. Well, I think, what, although I do understand that like students want, uh, want online voting, and I do, I truly believe also that it must be done in a correct fashion. The thing is, what we seem to forget here is that executive or students like us, they either have exams or they may have family trips, so they may have other engagements. And while I understand that like online voting is something that can be done probably said like by um, simply voting or other companies that said they, they can do it like on the next day or very fast. The thing is, at the end of the day, it's a private company that tries to sell us a product. Let's be real on that as well. So I just want to underline that. I want online voting pretty much as like anyone in this room, but at the same time, we, I think I'm just going to underline what Sophie said as well. We need to, to see a plan B and if not, I mean, I just, I just want to underline the huge like, security issue here and what like, the, the, the professionals already said here. So that's what I want to say. Thank you, Chris. 
Yeah, so um, I have an idea, and if somebody agrees with it, they can turn it into a motion. So um, before one of the executives said, you know, uh, Pat and I seem very passionate about it. If we, if we are so passionate about it, we should be helping. I think that's a good point. And I think it might be a good idea to create the position of online voting coordinator, which I wouldn't do because I'm a referendum chair. I wouldn't do it. But I think it would be a good idea to create an online voting coordinator position, have appointments committee, appoint someone. We could take um, CVs from everybody in council, and appointments committee could, deci could decide who could do that. Some, an idea. So someone in council could assist by working over the holiday in getting this done. And I mean, while I'm a referendum chair and I won't do it, um, I think someone, you know, I know I could use the money, and I'm pretty sure someone else here could. And it helps the executives out. Thank you. Patrick? Um, so I did talk to Sophie on Tuesday, and what I did tell her was I would be there for backup and help her out in any capacity when it came to online voting. And I'm still holding that end of the bargain, so if people want to ask me to help out, like I've already said, I will help write these temporary regulations, that's fine. Like, just ask me. Um, and that's my point, is I will, I'll, like, I'll work with anyone on this, so yeah. Um, yes, Michaela? I don't know how we could appoint somebody when we're closing on the 19th and we're probably, Caitlin has indicated that she can't chair next week. We don't think we'll even meet quorum next week. How can we have, we're already appointing a CEO and the appointments committee is on that. I don't understand how we could somehow hire somebody else, do a call out within this amount of days and even though I asked for Chris and Patrick to be part of this, John has now indicated that you cannot, I either of you. Not. Also Patrick, or am I wrong? I don't. Is he a volunteer on the campaign? Yeah, but he can resign from that. <laughs> That's, That's a real <laughs> conflict of interest there. But to be honest, I think that we've already crossed that line. To me, I'm just really appalled by what's happening here. It's really crazy. I don't understand. You're not listening to us at all. The only feasible way to do that would be as if the CEO hired an additional DEO test with that. Because it's not possible to do job, create a job description, post the job description, send out a newsletter, have the appointments committee, do the interviews, do the training. It is not possible in the timeline that exists. The only way that that could even theoretically be done is if the CEO did the hiring. And even that raises some questions about timeline and all that stuff, because the CEO also will have Christmas break. So just keep that in mind that it's a good idea, but difficult to do. I just recall an important bit of information uh, that uh, Brian from uh, Simply Voting mentioned today. Uh, he highly recommended that uh, we, uh, since we have uh, a lot of security implications if we do online vote votings, that we should appoint uh, a security auditor, that, a human that will check, uh, that will look at the results of the election for suspicious activity, uh, following a simple guide actually that they provide. Uh, I, he mentioned that this was not, this has not been mentioned to uh, anybody on uh, the election committee yet. And uh, that should be discussed before we go on with this. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, there is no one else on the speakers list. Uh, the motion on the floor let me just it again, is to uh, create a plan B for the next SCM and also have temporary regulations for online voting and to send this to policy committee. Is everyone okay with the motion? Okay, so all those in favor, please raise your placards. Could you read the motion again? Sorry. Yep. Um, let me go find it again. It was to create a plan B for the next, sorry, it was before the next SCM, and also have temporary regulations for online voting and to send this to policy committee. Okay, so all those in favor, please raise your placards. Two. All those of oh, oh, sorry? Sorry. Uh, you just yes again? Yes. All those in favor? One, two. All those opposed? One, two. Okay. 
people seem confused about the voting. <coughs> okay. Is everyone clear on what we're voting for? No. Because everyone's giving me blank stares. I'd yes. Like to have some, some information on the table here. Okay. I have hard enough time getting policy committees to meet. We have three fee levies to review. We have so much work to do, and I can barely get policy committee to meet. So I don't know how this is feasible <coughs> for us to do. I'm sorry that I sound very frustrated right now, but it doesn't make any sense, especially when Patrick's on policy, and like it's really hard for us to meet, and I have a very enormous issue with people filling in the when to meets. So to put this on in another unrealistic way doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so if there's nothing else to be discussed, the motion on the table is to create a plan B before the next SCM, which is special council meeting, and to have temporary regulations for online voting and to send it to policy committee. So all those in favor, please raise your placards. Two, all those opposed, one, two, three, and any abstentions? Yeah. Caleb and James. All right, thank you. So the motion <coughs> fails, and we're back on the speaker's list, which is Rowan. Rowan! Present. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, so there's no speaker's list. Yes, Arjun? Uh, I just wanted to mention something as a uh, as software engineering student with a personal interest in cybersecurity, uh, and also as a student at large. Uh, frankly, I'm disappointed by how frivolously uh, the council is taking this matter. Um, it seems that there is, has been no uh, official recommendation from its own uh, election committee. It seems that there hasn't been um, a security audit review. Um, we're now getting all this information that, oh, that maybe we should uh, appoint someone that's going to be in charge of security. Um, it seems that the online election gang doesn't even know um, what the student information is going to be disclosed, and uh, it is the council's job to do due diligence, and uh, they have a fiduciary responsibility uh, to the organization. So to treat us this so lightheartedly is uh, frankly disappointing. Thank you, James. All right. So I would kind of like to, to uh, on, on the topic of uh, online voting, I'd like to guess uh, uh, what. Uh, for for pl kind of, kind of uh, on on the topic of Plan Bs, uh, I believe that uh, uh, you know one of the things that I voted against is that the reasons I, I like I didn't vote on the last motion is because I thought that uh, the mandate to have a Plan B, a single Plan B, was probably not the best one. I was more in favor of something like maybe uh, putting multiple multiple plans of action at the next SCM uh, special meeting. Um, I'll be, you know, and also to, to, to note uh, for other people, uh, my last final is on Friday, so I will be much, much freer. Also, on the topic of finals, I would like to get, you know, please somebody do something good because I need to get back to studying full time or else I will fail something probably, and I don't want to do that. So, um, you know, I just. I guess, uh, you know, just amend, not amend the motion, but I would be in favor of a motion, for example, to uh, mandate people to present multiple plans and then we'll vote on a plan B at the next meeting or something. Um, Who knows? Can I just <coughs> mention? Yeah, there's no one on the speaker's list. Okay, it That's was not. previously. Oh. It was previously. Oh, do, do you want to just finish, James, and then. Yeah, I'll put yeah no, and, and if you're about to say the previous motion was to present a singular the plan B. I'm motioning to present alternative plans of action at next week's SCM, regardless of what, whatever. So I think, I, you know, it, look, it's... What I was going to mention is that we're not going to have an SCM t next week, which has been mentioned before. We're not going to meet quorum, and Caitlin is not there to chair. People are still in finals. A lot of them are away. We barely met quorum this week. I'd like I'd like for this meeting to end as quickly as possible so that I can get back to study. That's just something that I need to do. We have quorum without you, by the way. All right. Thank you, uh, Sophie. 
Um, it seems to me that like we don't really need to think that far, uh, uh, that much about like the plan B. Plan B seems pretty straightforward. Just do the election as we've been doing them for years. So I don't know why we're trying to like create this like different proposals. Like I don't know. Maybe like you guys, people are thinking about a bunch of different things, how to run elections, but it seems like we know what the plan B is and we should just get ready for it. Now, if we cannot agree that we should drop online voting for January, we should just vote tonight to have this plan B ready. It does cost money and that's not great, but like it's, it doesn't seem like online voting is a feasible but apparently we're not hearing that in the room, so we should just at least vote and get ready for the plan B uh, as of tonight. Thank you. Uh, Peter? So mine is a direct response to Sophie, though. My only concern with the plan B is that it's just, it's just not going to work because with the problem that we had with the old, that, some, that someone drops, First time that we had a CEO who dropped right at the middle of the election, and we have someone who is conflict of in, in interest for CEO, it's just going to be really hard to work in, gen in, in January if we only have a month to do this. And I don't see how this could work if we only have a month, a month to do it, go going back to our old, si old system with only one month, and like I, I just don't think that the election are going to happen. There's a possibility that that if we're going to go back to the other one, it for sure will delay again. And the problem is. The whole thing that 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 been happened within the past three to four months. So I really suggest that that we should just go for the online one and then just do as much as we can for this one. Thank you, Kevin. Yep, I motion to have a plan B uh, and to have a plan B as paper ballot if uh, online voting fails to be. <coughs> So uh, whenever you try to implement a project with new technology and that, that said new technology does not work, usually what you do is go back to the old. All the way that you know that works. Thank you. Sophie? I called a question. Okay. We have to wait a second. We lost four. Oh, okay. Well, not if nobody calls it, right? No, Three. we have four. No. Yeah, we have seven. Oh. Yeah, it's seven. seven. Three, four, five, six. Two people. Seven. Oh, seven. Seven. There we go. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay yeah. So the motion on the table is to have a plan B as paper ballot if online voting fails to be implemented before the election. All those in favor, please raise your placards. Of calling the question? Five. Uh, no, of the motion itself. Oh, okay. Was there any opposition to calling the question? I don't think there was. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those opposed? One. And no abstentions. Perfect. So that carries. Is there anything else to be discussed on the topic of online voting and implementation? Okay. Um, at this point, we are on the next agenda point, and that is CEO. Uh, Mikhail? Yeah, so um, previously, the minute keepers, uh, or the appointments for minute keeper, maybe we should be doing this, but basically, uh, council allowed appointments committee to take that over, um, which means notwithstanding standing regulations. And um, the executive are recommending that we do that for CEO since we're very worried that we're not going to meet quorum next week. And so basically that means that all of the uh, appointments have been set up. Um, 
UV Licks can continue. Like, it's happening on Monday and Tuesday? Yep, um, deadline is uh, Sunday night at midnight. Um, so the earliest we could possibly start going through them is Monday morning. Um, we can do the appointments uh, for me from Monday to Wednesday, and hopefully have someone by Wednesday. If anyone who's not on the appointments committee wants to come, they're welcome to. Um, but we do not want to risk not having quorum, so we want to not withstand the standing regulations, um, which means that we have to have a question, sorry, um, in order to allow appointments committee to take on this role. Thank you. Uh, Ron? Do we know what standing regulations uh, It's the same one we did last week. Let me find the number. Um, Yeah, it says the application, the applicants for the position of chairperson and minute keeper shall have an opportunity to speak at the meeting for which their candidacy will be considered, but it doesn't mention CEO in that one. Let me just check if it's anywhere else. Is it? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Is it the council or presenter shall appoint a chief electoral officer for the, oh sorry, that's annual general elections? By, By elections or referenda, chief electoral officer shall be charged with the supervision of the set Publicities and shall report the results of such in accordance with the bylaws? Yeah, there's nothing about them having to do an interview at council in the same way that the chairperson and minute keeper do. That's <coughs> what so I'm just trying to make sure that there's not a. Um, if there is, I don't. Um, yeah, no, it just says that CEO shall be appointed by a two thirds majority vote of council. So in that case. Yeah, would that. Like, do you want to not withstand that, or do you want to appoint through appointments and then have it come to council for no, a two-thirds? we don't have time. Okay, so notwithstanding 279 in that case. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, we also need a motion, because there's none on the table right now. Rowan? I move to notwithstand standing regulation 279 and grant the appointment of the authority to appoint a CEO for the January violations. Sorry, I did not have that written Um, It's all good. Um, do you mean to appoint a CSU CEO or appoint for the January by-elections only? Because that's a difference. What do I mean? Can you say that again, Caitlin? Um, do you mean to appoint the CSU's new CEO, who then has a mandate that's pretty or much needed. indeterminate? Yes. Okay, yes. So to, okay, so we'll take off January by-elections, because that could have caused problems. Um, okay, do we have a second? Kemi, throw in your motivation. Uh, we need a CEO. An election. The discussions of online voting are great and important, but I mean, when it comes down to it, I hope we can at least agree on that. Um, okay, is there any discussion? Alright, so all those in favor of notwithstanding 279 to grant the Appointments Committee authority to appoint the CSU's next CEO. 5 6, all those opposed? 1. Alright, so that carries. Uh, appointments Committee will do that. Okay, at this point, uh, we're still on the point of CEO. All right. Um, and now we are on the point of additional mindful project coordinator. And I think this one's yours, Michaela. Yeah, I'm taking it for Sophie. So I'll just read the motion. Whereas the 22nd of August 2018, the Council of Representatives approved $5,000 in funding for the Mindful Project to run one full program in fall 2018 and two programs in the winter 2019 semester, with funding only granted for one coordinator to work 20 hours for the entire program, whereas the increased demand and overall success of the Mindful um, pro project has increased the workload of the single project coordinator significantly, whereas work for the winter programs needs to begin as soon as possible for the mindful project's success in the winter semester, whereas finance committee was unable to meet quorum on um, December 7th, 2018, so this was un unable to pass through the committee for approval. Be it resolved that Council approve an additional $620 in funding for the Mindful Project to be divided in the following way. $310 additional to the honorarium of Leigh Omer, 
um, for the fall program to reflect her increased and exemplary work as a mindful project coordinator and $310 to hire a second coordinator to assist Lay um, in, the, in the winter on the downtown campus. Thank you. Uh, Rowan, was that a second? Sorry. Okay. Uh, Michaela, your motivation? Um, yeah, basically, there was a huge participation in this program. There was 20 that, uh, there was a capacity of 20 and there was 10 on the wait list and all 20 stayed. So there's an enormous amount of people who want to be involved in this. Um, basically, it's urgent in the sense that it really, they need to get started on working and they need a second quarter <coughs> to do this work well. Is there any discussion? Oh, yes, Caleb. Yeah, um, question. How much, maybe, uh, I forgot the amount, but how much did we give Leia already as an honorarium? Michaela, do you have it? Uh, I don't have it offhand, no. Okay. Um, Does I anyone remember what it? meeting it was? I can pull up the minutes. During this. Uh, I, I don't ask me. don't remember which meeting. I think. It was one of the SCMs in the summer. Yeah, it was yeah, one of the SCMs. It was late July or August. that the CSU dedicate 5000 to the executive of three mindful project programs for the 2018-2019 mandate. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, is there any more discussion to be had? Okay, so if not all those in favor, please raise your placards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four, seven counselors. That is all. <coughs> oh, we are? Oh, my apologies. Okay. All those opposed then? If there is nothing further on additional mindful project coordinator, we are at Annex A. And Michaela, this one's yours. Yeah, okay, so um, this was meant to be passed two councils ago, and um, just to like very briefly summarize, uh, so the changes in policy is that we're going from 30 bursaries for students to 35 bursaries, and the amount for each bursary used to be 500, and now it's going to be 650. Um, uh. Yes. Just for personal privilege, why yeah. is the annex on the third? Because um, at the beginning of council, the agenda was rearranged. Yeah, but the retaining thing is still not. A, did you all did, did you also rearrange the retaining bit bit? Yeah. Bit so? Well, it's going to be there. It's just the yeah. five top points where yeah. the, this is number five of it. Yeah. Go ahead, Michaela. Um. The role uh, originally was in the academic and advocacy coordinators, and now it's going to be sustainability. Um, this is because sustainability committee has not a, a big as, uh, as big of a workload, and um, sustainability, I think it's really important that it's not just environmental, which is also very important, but also looking at social and economic sustainability efforts. Um, there were ch like other changes that needed to be done from like ENCS to the Gina Cody School of Engineering and Computer Science. There was a change from the, the female leadership bursary to a student <coughs> parent bursary. Um, there's a large amount of student parents in the past who've applied for this bursary and this female leadership award is a little bit outdated and especially when the policy already mandates that it be gender parity. Um, there's now a reference letter that's needed for Concordia student athletes, outstanding contribution to Concordia student life and a few other ones. Um, now, all the documentation must be uh, given in order to be considered. In the past, there's been issues with only having certain amounts of documentation, and that makes it very hard to agree upon certain people when you are missing information. Um, there were other inconsistencies with criteria that were fixed, and in addition, if there's only one application for a category, it's decided by the committee. If it's decided by the committee that's not a strong application, um, then if there's criteria to have at least somebody in that category, those guidelines can be circumvented. Anyways, it's all listed in the policy um, updates. 
Um, if there's any questions, if not, uh, hopefully this can pass so that we can implement it for January when the bursaries are going to go out. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Yes, Rowan? Sorry, does it need a second? Uh, no, there was actually no motion. So if we can just move to approve the annex. Okay. Um, do we have a second? Yeah. So key. Okay. Is there any discussion to be had? Okay, so if not, all those in favor of approving the Annex A amendments, please raise your placards. Six, all those opposed? Zero, and abstentions? Zero. All right, so that carries. Um, and with that, we are on uh, returning business and resolving conflicts on CSU clubs. Peter, this one is yours. Yep, so... Oh, yes, Michelle? Is there a reason we are skipping appointments to CSL? I wanted it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't... Sorry, that yeah. was... Sorry, Peter, yeah. Sorry, it should be quick. I will <coughs> yeah. do it, but I will try again. Um, so, I spoke with David, who is one of the members of CCSL. I spoke at a, a last a couple meetings ago that um, the attendance from the counselors who were on this committee was uh, low to nothing. Um, some most counselors hadn't attended a single meeting. Um, both counselor, uh, two of the counselors spoke to me and would like to stay on the committee and, and believe there was some miscommunication about the dates. Uh, one of them, David, uh, asked to step down from the committee. Um, so there is one open spot on CCSL. CCSL is the Concordia Council on Student Life. It is chaired by the Dean of Students. It is a parity committee, meaning that it um, has half students half administration, which means that students actually have um, input and a real <coughs> say on this committee. Um, we approve special projects funding um, from between, from up, up to $20,000. There are a lot of different interesting applications and student projects that come in. Uh, there are also awards that are given out. Uh, it's, it's fun, it's once a month, um, and it is a really good uh, thing to support student life. Would anyone like to be on CCSO? Other yeah. information. Um, yeah. When is the frequent? When are the frequency of meetings? About once a month. Okay. Yeah. On yeah, so Fridays Sophie. usually. Sophie. Okay. okay. Um. No, they're Fridays. Okay. Fridays don't work. Yeah. <laughs> Their Friday mornings usually ten to twelve. Okay. okay. All the other standing committees were tabled until after by-elections. Mm -hmm. um, CCSL doesn't fall into that category, yeah. but just, you know, there's more counselors coming in. Yes, Rowan? How many meetings are there until, like, the after by-election period? Uh, I believe there's one in January. I'd have to double-check because I don't have the list uh, with me right now. Um, if I can yeah. give given a minute to do that, um, we can maybe just return to this in a few minutes. Yeah. Rowan? I mean, if there's one in January, I'm happy to sit on CCSL like be appointed until after by-elections and just like come to that one meeting so that there's someone yeah. that's going to help. Um, I think it is here. Yeah, it's here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michelle, do you have Yes. Uh, would it be possible to get, I mean, just for council's information, uh, to get um, how many councillors are not sitting on committees currently? Um, well, I just found out that David resigned from that, so that's good to know. Um, I have it per January 25th, actually. I thought usually it's earlier, so if we wanted to wait until by elections, that would make sense. All right, thank you. So by elections would be done and yeah. we have a council meeting before then? Yeah, we have a council. Uh, oh, good point. Um, yeah, no. there's a council meeting on the 9th. Uh, no, but by elections won't be done. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, what's the next one, the 23rd or the 30th? Uh, two weeks after that, I think it's the 23rd. It's the 23rd. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so yes, there will be one a couple days before. Two days. Thanks, Rob. Um, and to answer your question, unless things have changed and I missed it, Sally does not sit on a committee. 
and neither is somebody still yes I can further this. Uh, I think that is all. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah. Is there any more discussion on CCSL? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So at this point, we are on our resolving problems <coughs> on CSU clubs. And Peter, this is yours. Do you want to start with the motion, please? Yeah. So basically. So basically, it's really straightforward with this. <coughs> that, uh, yeah. So basically, whereas inter interpersonal com conflict occurs within sexual clubs among sexual mem members or interactions, Whereas a current counselor has experienced such interpersonal conflict with no resolution, whereas there is currently no mechanism for this re re resolution within the sexual se se club, be it resolved that the policy com com committee be tasked with, the with investigating this issue and proposing a solution to council. So. Basically, if, po if possible, to table to pol policy com committee and the committee can figure out a way of doing it. Okay. Um, is there a second? For the motion? Yeah. Uh, Kemi, do you want to motivate Peter? I mean, basically, I just. Basically, is what I've been talking about in the past council meeting that. Basically, I just really truly believe that this is not a interpersonal pro problem that I know that executive is keep saying that. So I basically would like policy committee to go deeper into this, to go deeper investigating into, in, into this, and try to find a way of dealing with clubs or anything that happened in, in, in the future because I don't think that this should be happened on safety particular not to a con council though, so yeah, that's it. Okay, is there any discussion on CCSL? Yeah, Mikhail, do you want to motivate Peter? Yeah, I Okay, so all those in favor of the motion, please raise your placards. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those opposed? Zero and abstentions. And thank you very much. All right, so that carries. Um, Rowan. I move to excuse Sophia Martin, Akira, and Princess. Okay. And wave the. Yeah. Right. Do we have a second? Um, uh, Chris, sorry. Do you want to motivate Rowan? We forgot to do it at the beginning because at the beginning of Catholicism is a bad form. Um, I don't have reasons from Princess or Kira, but I know that so. Kira is unwell. I know Sophie um, literally got hurt while representing students at Bog, so I think it's only fair. Um, yeah. Um, Point of information. Yes. Did, is anybody not excused currently? Um, everyone who has not been excused. Okay. So literally everybody that sent requests. It's just we were getting the important stuff out of the way first, so all the procedural stuff were kind of leave until the end. Um, so currently there's the three execs uh, on the table. If you want to do other um, excusals after, that's fine. Marley? Just have something to say. Yeah. Uh, not that I don't enjoy your presence, but it's my birthday today, so I'm not going to stay too long. Happy I, I have a family. And people who love me. <laughs> <laughs> so at 35, I'm leaving. I know it might cause an issue for Quorum, but people love me. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you yes. for coming. Uh, thank you. Council also loves you, but in a different way. No, <laughs> council in a professional <laughs> way. <laughs> council for you to strike. Wait, we have Quorum. Yeah, we, we yeah, do have Quorum. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But anyways, she's she's not the first. You have people that love her. <laughs> All right. Either one of you guys. All right. Nobody. Nobody yeah, is forced please. to stay at council. Just so you know. Thank you so much for coming, yeah. Marlene. Thank that was you. really appreciated. All right. Um, and uh, have the happiest of birthdays. Yeah. God bless. I mean, yeah. Great. I'm already trying to double task with my notes. So. I mean, no one. No one's obliged to stay at council. Like, if, if it has to end, it has to end. I'm going to. Um, What's left? That's urgent. Like. Um, nothing is urgent, really. I mean, there's accessibility for student parents. It's all stuff returning business from last week that was already okay, so tabled. In that case, um, so. uh, James. All right. So in, in that case, uh, a motion to move everything to the January meeting. Everything that's that's after this point. Okay. Is there a second? Um, Debbie, do you want to motivate James? Um, well, I'm going to leave as soon as possible because I have finals very soon. Uh, I think everybody else has finals. And Marlene is leaving, so what is it, 10 minutes? We're not going to get anything done in 10 minutes. Pragmatism. Right, yeah. we have quorum. No. no, without those two. Yeah, well, I, do, I don't really feel all too comfortable. Literally, I'm doing more studying than I am listening. That's cool. Okay. Um, is there any opposition to adjourning? Okay, just to say, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the consent agenda, and we didn't actually approve it, so is everyone okay if it just gets dumped over to next time, and if anyone wants to pull anything, we can do it then. Is that all good? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so all those in favor of adjourning, please raise your placards. Heaven. Oh. All those opposed? I, I forgot Zero. to vote yes. Sorry? I forgot to vote yes. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, okay. it carries. Okay, thank you very much for showing up during your exams, and I will see you all in January.